welcome to another edition of Africa Tonight here on Joy Prime. My name is Bazak Fusbao, and tonight, finally, we know the last four of this year's edition of the African Cup of Nations tournament. But the big question is, which country is going to lift the trophy? You've got South Africa in there. You've got Ivory Coast in there. You've got Nigeria in there. And then you've got the Democratic Republic of Congo in there. So who is going to be lifting the trophy come Sunday? That is the big question. Well, we're going to know the two teams that are likely to lift it come Wednesday, when the semi-final action finally do take place. Today, what we're going to do is spend some time on the quarterfinal fixtures that did happen on Friday and Saturday. Of course, did start with Nigeria defeating Angola. Big win for them. And then, of course, GRC went ahead also to clinch their sports in the semi-final after a very long time, since the 60s, over 60 years now, I understand, since they managed to, uh, they've been able to get this far. And South Africa, once again, after, since 2002, have made it to the semifinals. And they've been able to stage an, uh, you know, a contest, whether it's going to be an Amapiano or an Afrobeat. Is there is an Amapiano, Afrobeat contest. And we are waiting for it. And for the Ghanaian spectators, they don't quite like the two sides, so they're just going to be neutrals and look on. There are those who are hoping that Nigeria will make it to the final, and in the event they lose in the final, then the trolls will become even more exciting. But the game itself promises to be exciting come Wednesday. And still with me, Esfrimpon is here. He's been with us all this while, uh, through on Wednesday, Thursday, right? We're here. And, of course, uh, what I always remember about you was the celebration that you did when Ivy Coast won against Senegal, and you are rooting for Ivy Coast to go all the way to the final. I told you to uh, win. Mm, and, they mm. and they did. Yeah, yeah. We should trust you for some nice odds coming up on Wednesday. And sit your hair. We missed you, man. We missed you. Good yeah, to see you. Good, good to, to see back. you. Good to be back. Yeah, good yeah, back. yeah, yeah. Good to be back. Yeah, our grandfathers have been hosting you, you know, taking all your time, but <laughs> 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 good to have you. Good to yeah, have you. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, the grandchildren need to feed on him a bit, you know. <laughs> and we're talking about the grandfathers. Those of you who are watching him. You know hey, what I'm talking about. So good to have you guys. Great. It was an exciting quarterfinal encounter. We have a lot to talk about. From point, you've got something to show us on the task screen. We'll do that. But guys, even before we delve into it, I want us to just take a second look at what really happened in the quarterfinal games beginning on Friday. Beautiful goals were scored. And of course, look out for that DRC spectacular free kick that has got everybody talking. Just to get us off the ground, a pulsating confrontation between two nations vying for a place in the semi finals. Uh, it's, it's a header, it's, oh, it's off the post! Look at this! It's the header there coming from Gilberto. That should have been in the back of the net. Mabalulu! Oh, it's a nice, sneaky little piece of play from that man, Lookman. Scored two goals. Uh, Mo Simon has another chance to get the ball across, Lookman. As a cross, as a players at the far post as well. Comes in, look at the header from Osimhen. He is super dangerous, that man. That's a good opportunity. A little bit of space. Moses Simon down the left hand side. Can he get a shot in? Squares it. It's in the back of the net. Nigeria. It's Lugman. Lugman's done it. He's got that goal. Beautiful work from the wingers. Nigeria take the lead. It's Nigeria one and goal in The ball comes over the top. Any ball at the end of it. Choose the cog. It goes up. There's another chance. Another header. It's a little bit messy in the midfield. Show getting the ball through. Oh! Well, astonishingly, the Democratic Republic of Congo have not won a game at this Africa Cup of Nations finals in Cote d'Ivoire, yet they find themselves the marginal favourites tonight. 
Guinea get us underway here. First attack from Guinea. Guilla Vogi in on goal. Oh, it's just gone in. Let's uh, rest some of their players ahead of that game. Now the keeper is called. Well, this was really ridiculous. Look at it bounce. He's calling for the keeper. You can't get better than that. Diakite to the middle looking for Bio. Penalty. He was brought down. And now scored. Perfectly done by Bio and Giddy into the lead. Here's a plan full of confidence. Masuaku will take it to the back post. Call back inside. Oh, that's lovely. That's brilliantly done by Mbemba. Inviting ball. There was a little touch, I think, from one of the defenders. There it is from Mustafa Gubal. One all at halftime. Mbemba with the equaliser after Bio put uh, Guinea in the lead. Maybe a little loss of concentration at the vital moment, and it allows the Congolese to steam forward here. This is a good, strong run. Is that a penalty? Referee says yes. Tripped from behind is Silas. What an immediate impact he's made. Visa steadies himself, scores. Congo are ahead. 2 1. 96, that's a goal. Superbly done. Directly taken from the free kick, and surely it's all over now. And what a superb free kick from Masuaku to losing to South Korea. This might be a chance for Guinea here. Yeah, the shot's over the top. Give them lots of confidence well for the World Cup qualifiers. Silas can finish it. Oh, oh, oh. That was poor. That was really poor. And that's it, says the referee. It's all over. Democratic Republic of Congo are going. Yes, that's how Demo the Democratic Republic of Congo managed to stage a semi-final contest with the host nation, Ivory Coast. Big game happening on Wednesday in Abidjan. And, of course, expect some real, 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 real uh, tennis moment among the Ivorians as the game does unfold. They had real party uh, on Saturday after the Ivorians managed to clinch that semi-final bet. But I've got the guys in the studio. So let me just start with you. I mean, you've seen this game again and again and again. I mean really good performance by the DRC. They had not won a game till Friday in the quarterfinals, three goals to one, because they had drawn all their games from the group stage to the round of 16, and against Guinea, I mean, it looked like it was quite easy for them. Yeah, um, it, it turned out to be, look, the scoreline looked easy mm. for them, but I thought, again, the same problem that we've seen them have during the tournament was still surfaced. Mm. They don't score m many goals. Mm -hmm. And if you want to critically analyze the game, three goals is a lot of goals for any football game. But if you want to analyze the game critically, you're looking at the goals they scored. They weren't necessarily chances that were created from the way they played. Mm -hmm. They scored from a, a corner kick, Buffalo to Mbamba, that was brilliantly executed by his individual quality. Mm -hmm. Then they got a penalty, they scored from the spot from Wessa. Then Masuaku scored from an unbelievable angle from the free kick. So I still think the underlying problem that they still had in the team is still there, where they defend well at times, but they don't just create enough from open play to get themselves a lot of goals. And you wonder if in the semi-final mm. they, they can be lucky again. I mean, I have my doubts about them. But in, in the game, I thought when they played against Guinea, the problem that Guinea had was Guinea was also very blunt up front. Mm. You know, we know uh, Gerasi has not been fit throughout the whole competition. He barely started any game for them. They didn't have anybody up front providing the service that they would have needed up front. So uh, Congo had it a bit... You know, a bit fortunate in terms of the threat that we're going to come at them. But it won't take anything away from a team that has some way, somehow, mm. got themselves in, in any major, in major tournament semi. So, yeah, credit to them. They just need to find a bit of bite and spark mm. when they play into the final third. Yeah, well, of course, they're going to be playing Ivy Coast, and hopefully they can improve on that. But then, earlier, was Nigeria versus Angola. It was a relatively decent game. There was just one goal in that game, and Nigeria have continued their run, you know, Round of 16, one goal, quarterfinal, one goal. Not sure if it's going to be the same in the semifinals. What, what Nigeria have? have gone in the tournament, it's about getting it right. They started off wrongly. Mm -hmm. I think they are set up defensively, had them all over the place. But with what they've done now, three other back, two wide players, or two lateral players, it allows them a bit more freedom to go forward mm -hmm. and a bit more solidity when they have to defend. So. It's allowing them enough time to create in the middle and 
They are playing with wingers that naturally will think they'll be out wide, but mm. they are inverted. Mm. And Osimhen makes all these sorts of decoy runs, creates enough space, ball comes to the edge of the box. Lukman, Simon, or Iwobi will be on there, and it's just perfect for them. Um, but then they played a team that we, I expected a bit more for. Yeah, we expected them. a bit more, you know, considering the number of goals they've scored so far in the tournament, yeah. like, yeah, Nigeria is finally going to be tested, but. Mm. Especially mm. with how they, they came through um, the last round, mm. um, they destroyed Namibia. Yeah. But then against Nigeria, they were blunt because Nigeria were structurally good. I mm. think Nigeria's setup makes it very difficult for you to, to break them down. Mm. You're forced to try the long ball, mm -hmm. set pieces, and they'll deal with them. If you want to go directly through their middle, there's always someone protecting the back five or back four. Mm. And that's what's making Nigeria work. Um, having someone like Calvin Bassi in there allows them to have Sanusi push up because he can just cover. You know when you play three at the back, you want three mobile center backs. Mm. They can run, cover, and Truth De Kong stays in the middle. On the right-hand side, you have someone also covering. And that allows you to have a, a solid base because it's like you have three, and then you have two, mm. then you have the four in the middle, mm. that it's also looking like a, a box in the middle. So they always have a numerical advantage mm. when they have the ball, as well as when they're off the ball. Mm. So enough protection for them. So it, it, it was one of those games where they just needed to score mm. and then relax, because mm. then chances will come. Because on the counter, they've got speed. They've got people that can hurt the opponent. Yeah. And we thought Osimhen had, had his goal, mm. but then it was chalked off. But mm. Definitely, Nigeria will be a threat in the, in the next round. Definitely, Nigeria is going to be a threat in the next round. But guess what? The Angolans, yeah, they, were exist they existed in the quarterfinal. Quite disappointing after the game. But then they landed in Luanda, and boy, nobody got to tell. It was a whole concept for them. It was a whole concept. The Black Stars got their concept before they jet off to Ivy Coast. You know, Stoneboy performed. When they come back, we, we saw how they all decided it to disperse. Yeah, Party you know. Yeah, but man, in Luanda, it was fun. You should have been there. You should have seen the players really breaking their ways. If you haven't seen it, I've got just a snippet of it for you. And then we'll come and take a look at the games that happened on Saturday. Well, I'm not going to attempt trying to do that. I'm going to break my waist. Definitely, the situation is not going to do that. Maybe if your looks a bit, you know, he's should I can't. that. There may be Daniel. <laughs> we'll give it to Daniel. If he's watching, maybe you got to try that. Well, it was a good party for them. Quarterfinals, yeah. this party is good. It's good. It's yeah, good. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, they, 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 we have, we've got to look at puts into context. Yeah. They've, not, they've not been here for a very long time. Mm. The last time they came here was in 2010 when they hosted it. Mm. And they've been under the radar for a very long time. And here they are. Yeah. And they played some fabulous football in the competition. One of the most exciting teams to watch. Mm. Except that um, whenever teams, you know, set up shop against them, they couldn't find the spaces. And, and that is what we saw against mm. Nigeria. Against Nigeria, I mean, Nigeria's predominantly back five when they were off the ball, mm. and how expansive they could be through the wide areas when they had the ball. And and I spoke about the midfield box. Yeah, very very good to see Onyeka and Wobi sit at the base and get the two wide players in. Uh, in, this, in, the, in the case of the game, mostly Simon mm. and. Adam and Lukman sitting on top of that box and Osimhen doing it around his own. So it caused them problems but in the middle of the park. Where, and when Angola attack as well, they like to attack with the front five. Mm -hmm. So they vacated two other players from the midfield to join the front three. So anytime Nigeria got the ball in transition, they were in trouble because yeah. only one man was in the middle. And Nigeria have got some pace about them in the midfield. So yeah, they would be proud about their outs and something mm -hmm. to build on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have to be honest with you, we're just monitoring the comments on social media and, and even among the players post the game. They said, 
among the people in Angola, they had absolutely no hope in the team that they were even going to get out of the group stage. So making it the quarterfinals came as a big surprise to them. All right, but on Saturday, it was drama. Ivory Coast versus Mali. Boy, somebody's head was really hot and it had to... Gallons of water had... I'm going to show you that for sure. But let's take a recap of the action that happened on Saturday and we'll come and talk more about it. and their northern neighbours, Mali. So the formalities are over and we are underway for this keenly awaited quarter-final. And the same national team, and now again, the Malian down in the area, and another decision for the referee to make. Striker goal is saved by Fafana. And listen to the roar. Seri has all up it by Kamari Jumbia. Sinayoko. Sinayoko goes one way. He's fouled, and that'll be a free kick to Mali inside the oh, team. Red catch for Kosano there. And this is a yellow. And a nightmare half. Well, the referee blows the half time whistle. It is Mali nil. Ivory Coast nil. Central striker goal from distance from Haider. A blocked and parried by Fofana. And just pushed out. And Singo giving others opportunities. Onto his right foot. Surely must let fly. He does. And into the back of the red. And Mali has finally taken the lead. And it's Nene Dorsen as the substitute who has killed him. An absolute beauty. And Mali, how they've deserved this goal. From a set piece. Five Ivorians on the penalty spot. Up they go. Headed and headed wide. And was that the chance? Jiggy Jarrett. Opening up for them, into the box they go. Just got to drop it into Fafana. It doesn't break free, but it does now. Oh, the noise levels are insane because of Dingo, who's just come on, has brought the Ivorians level. We're just seconds of the noise to go. But the final whistle goes, and we are going to have an extra half hour. And Orgelet's trying to clear his lines, cannot do so. Singo will swing it in. There's a man there by Stecken, and Salah against the post. Oh, it was the man you wanted to go to. Trying to work an angle for the cross. Onto the left he goes, swung in. Oh, there's a cross to face a goal. Almost an own goal. Bit of movement as well. Overall, them headed away. Comes to Fafana. Low and out, and he's in the back of the net. And Ivory goes to Shorty Warren. Extraordinary scenes. They go with 10 men for well over an hour. And right at the end, with seconds to go, he's blown for full time. Africa Cup of Nations Cote d'Ivoire 2023 quarterfinal. It is Cape Verde against South Africa. A little cheer from the crowd as he gets on the end of it. Morena for Mokwena who fires on target. It's powerful but shaping up nicely here. They're looking to go through the center and a scuffed shot towards goal. Getting involved. Rocha Mendes now Cape Verde on the attack. It's a brilliant looking delivery. The follow up though sees the ball bounce around. It's all for South African player who is down, I think. Fernandes, opportunity. Rodriguez inside the area. Great chance for Cape Verde to take the lead here, and it's blocked. It's goalless between the uh, two nations as they go in search of a place in the semi finals. Gets the ball away. Mukwena, Mahopa. Uh, straight at the goalkeeper. Oh, lovely running by Rodriguez. One on one, takes the shot, and Williams is there, well positioned. His toilet was there. Buena gets a touch, and the shot is a snapshot. And oh, so nearly brilliant from Jovan, just over the crossbar of Ronwin Williams. Lovely ball in, one on one. Williams is beaten. He gets a little touch on it, I suspect. Goalless it is, and for the first time ever, Cape Verde will play extra time at a tournament. Youngster from Stellenbosch. Machopa chests it down, great chance! And denied by Virginia, his first real contribution in terms of saving. Could be here, tipped over by Virginia again. Not quite a double save, but a double contribution. Flick on, Gilson Tavares again with a shot, and it's flash across the face. Mukwena, Mukwena, it's on target, but Virginia's tucked in behind it. Cape Verde go to penalties for the first time ever at the Africa Cup of Nations against Ronan Williams. Denied by Williams! This 
from Mutubi Mvala to give South Africa the advantage. Comfortably converts. Patrick Andraj against Roman Williams. Williams sends South Africa into the semi-finals for the first time since 2000. He's made four saves in the penalty shootout. Yep, I mean, that's, that's really what happened. That's what happened. It was a nine for Williams, the goalkeeper of uh, South Africa. Splendid performance. There's absolutely no way to say this. Splendid, splendid, splendid performance. But guys, you know something? There was actually an Arabic commentary that I came across. That was really funny. I don't know whether you've seen it. So when South Africa kicked the final spot one, the, the final uh, uh, penalty, yeah. in the Arabic commentary, the guy started, waka waka e. She said, I'm sure we have it, right? C can we share it with our viewers? Just, if you have it, just let me know. Just a minute. It was incredible. Mm. I, th I think that was the, the perfect way to climax that penalty. Yeah, so the Arabic commentary is some of the most fascinating commentary you, to listen it's, to. It's, it's, you don't understand a thing in it, but you just, just carry it yeah. through. I mean, you, know? they, they, you can see they speak with some... You check like they did a stadium inside of yeah, yeah. challenge. It's why when when in, in putting in the Ghanaian quarters, when when those mm. commentary in tree are running mm. the commentary in tree, mm. people complain about how they do it. I'm like, yeah, you have yeah. no idea how others who don't understand mm. the tree are gonna enjoy the energy and the passion yeah. with it. Every language has a way yeah. to, yeah. to put yeah. across it. We've got it, we've got it. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. Watch it. It is Cape Verde against South Africa. <laughs> Uh, is it well I don't know man but I can, I can understand yeah and that is very smart the very first time that this commentator would have heard this song mm. would have been in South Africa 2010 yeah Shakira and so the first thing that comes to the mind when South Africa is on the verge of going through mm. is to bring up that song that lots of Africans and of course everybody who would have woke up with vibes mm. it's, it's, it's great tactic it's brilliant, brilliant man yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant man brilliant. now uh, Sisha, let me get let me get your thoughts on the game though um, okay let, let's just deal with the Mali game, mm -hmm. the Mali one was pretty interesting because, from point, you've got something to show us on the South Africa game, so we'll spend some time on the touch screen. But the Mali one against Avicos was, was something. It was drama, pure drama. My goodness. Somebody's writing these scripts that nobody can, can mm. actually predict. But listen, I, I thought, in the first 45 minutes, though, mm. Mali completely suffocated Cote d'Ivoire. They couldn't breathe, they couldn't, they couldn't get out of their half, they couldn't keep the ball, they couldn't play. Mm. It was Mali through and through. But Mali couldn't find a finish that, that, that they needed to get themselves away from Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. And so some way, someone, once Cote d'Ivoire managed to keep the, the, the scoreline goalless in that first half, was somewhat of a positive because they were, they were very much the, the second best in that half. Mm. Then also got a man sent off on the, on the edge of the halftime. Mm. Second 45 minutes, they are in the 10 against 11, managing the game. Then all of a sudden, Mali get the goal from nothing really. But I thought it was poor defending. Cote d'Ivoire should have closed in on Nene a little bit to deny him the space, mm. kill the ball into the top corner. Then from that point, you're not too sure how Cote d'Ivoire are going to get the goal. Yeah. But something smart happens from Thai, really, because what Thai does there is to throw in Sab Hela, mm. such a big frame, and then get Edin Grandiakite, two youngsters, off him. So when the ball goes long, they didn't need to play the ball. They are a man down. They can't pass the ball as they would have controlled the game as they would if they were 11 v 11. Mm. And even 11 v 11, they wouldn't get on the ball against this, this man inside. Once the ball starts going up to start Hela, he start dropping the ball off to Edingra. All of a sudden, Mali have got something to think about. So the Malian side that committed an extra body from defense into midfield to help their dominance, now got one body from midfield down to retreat to the back because the threat they were facing was different. Mm. And in the end, Cote d'Ivoire some way, somehow, got their lucky break. I think it's lucky because the first goal that was scored, the ball ricochets after the final shot, drops into a dingress feed, he scores. Mm. Then the corner in an, an extra time, just almost the final kick to shoot out. Some way, someone managed to get a goal through. So yeah, I thought Mali would have themselves to blame. They didn't create enough mm. to get the, the, the score line. You know, one that Cote d'Ivoire couldn't catch by with them, but for Cote d'Ivoire, what an attitude they've shown in this competition. You are a happy man. I, I oh, can imagine, I can imagine you in your room when that goal went in. Well, Word. When a dangerous shot went in, I shouted to my wife, wow, <laughs> I'm going to Abidjan. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, everything Citro said spot on. Um, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire just, they just used the crowd. Mm. Um, and second half, 
I think that's the best second half any team has played. A man down, and you couldn't tell mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. energy was right and the, the tactical switch. Um, it was the right move from Fai to just go for it in the sense that he took off a striker, which was um, Kwame, brought on a winger, and then from then onwards, he just tried to play off Seb Haller and use the pace mm. of his, off his wide men. Mm. And he, remember, he had Frank's, Frank's uh, Kessie, yeah. Fofana, and Seri on mm. at one point. And as much as Seri let them down with the red card and what, what's not happened, he was actually the right person to have alongside those people mm. to actually compose the middle. And it just ma made their job a lot easier in the, in the second half. So Ivy Coast just, they just rose to the occasion and Mali would would think is a, is a mixed Yeah, and it's quite understandable. And I think we saw that frustration, uh, the frustration in the players, you know, after the game, what they were, how they were heckling the referee. You could tell they were just, they were just looking for somebody to blame yeah. for losing out on they that semi final spot. They themselves to blame because yeah. got a penalty, they missed it. One man down, a so, goal up. Couldn't, they couldn't manage the game well. I thought when, when, and the thing about Mali too is they were so desperate looking for the second goal. It was unnecessary. I thought what they needed to do then was to take the steam out of the game. Mm. Get get make make the pitch big enough. Spread out. Mm. Pass the ball. Get Cote d'Ivoire's ten players to run and chase the ball the more and the, the short guys. But they were still very much compact playing the short passes, looking to find a second goal desperately. And in the end, mm. when 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 the momentum switched and Cote d'Ivoire's energy, as he said, they played off the energy of the fans. Mm. They just couldn't cope with it. They couldn't cope with it. But one man, unfortunately, also could not cope with it because his head was on fire. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, let's let's have it. Let's have it. Will kill you real, a real death. You will die because of football. Overheat. Football can kill you. Will kill you real, a real death. You will die because of football. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> Ooh, the coach go over hits it's I'm true kidding, football yeah. can kill you in the manner in which the game panned out it's mm, mm. i feel sorry for him really yeah. because his team played well but they couldn't get over the, get over the line it's yeah frustrating. well now is the south africa games we, we absolutely don't know where ron when lent all of that to say four penalties out of five it's incredible absolutely incredible and based on what we were hearing, uh, you said it has happened before. I was hearing that it has happened before somewhere yeah. in the AFCON or something like that. Well, he's a great goal, goal stopper. And uh, I personally have not seen a goalkeeper in any major tournament do this. Mm -hmm. But Onyanga, mm -hmm. who was uh, his goalkeeper, a senior colleague yeah. Yeah. in Sundowns in South Africa, mm -hmm. in the MTN 8 game, mm -hmm. saved about five penalties as well. Oh. So okay. I think Sundowns have got a very good way of bringing up goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. South Africa themselves have got a very good pool of goalkeepers. I think he's a, a goalkeeper's trainer right. now, in there. Yes, so they, perhaps. Yeah. Because, because they, 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 they train some of the best goalkeepers. And, yeah. and his record, though, is not bad. We saw him in the African Football League, which was, of course, live mm -hmm. on this platform, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. against Ali, he's saving penalties. In, in the PSO, he's saving penalties. Yeah. In the CAF Interclub competition, he's saving penalties. So yeah. it's, not, it's not a one-off for him. Mm. I, I'm, I'm sure South Africans were confident that going into the penalty was going to save at least one. Mm. They just were not sure it was going to save for and for us an awful lot yeah. when it comes to saving penalties. Unbelievable. Now, Frimpon, just, just you can walk across here oh. because you, you've been studying those penalties he well, saved and some other interesting uh, developments in that game. Uh, well, what have you got? Well, um, it's just having a look at what he's done, especially in the Cape Verde game. Yeah, so Frimpon, um, just, just move to the other side there. Eh? Well, if you, you have a, a good look at how important he was. We said before the game mm. that in this tie, he's the only person that would make a difference for, for South Africa. Mm. Not because they, they are not good going forward, but because Cape Verde would create chances. But if he can keep them out, that would be it. And truly he did. Um, we start here. So a critical look at this. Rodriguez is through on goal. You realize that, look, any, any keeper will be thinking that, OK, my, my player is going to go. My, keep, my players are chasing him. Maybe they can stop him. But he's got a clear eye at goal. What he's got to do now is just 
bend it, like... Yeah, in Balulu. In Balulu. But then he's quite patient. He doesn't rush. He doesn't give him the opportunity to make the decision. Rather, he waits. Mm. And whilst waiting, you can tell right here, you can see he's still anticipating that, okay, maybe he's going to go to my left. Mm. But he's actually quite calm, and it just parts straight into his arm. Keeps him... Is it a 55th minute? Keeps them in the game. We move forward. The next opportunity is this one. Well, no one needs to tell you what happened here, but one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, I would back him to finish this, mm -hmm. any striker. Mm -hmm. And with the intensity we saw him play against Ghana, um, Dalla, you would think that he would definitely finish this one. But again, Williams just makes himself big, gets a touch on it, and he's so quick off his feet. You don't realize it, but right after the shot, he's, he's up on his feet, waiting to ensure that he catches the ball. Mm. And you don't expect that from a, from a goalkeeper. We've seen some keepers stay on the ground a bit too long. <coughs> Second ball comes in, and they are found wanting. Well... I don't know why the Cape Verde keeper is in here, but it looks like... It looks like they, they want you to give him some credit for his saves as well, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he did something special in extra yeah, time. Yeah, Two yeah. saves. He, don't, he doesn't make those saves, and it doesn't go to penalties. Mm, mm. Well, yeah, penalties right here. Look, he... I think the psychology of penalties is something else. It's, it's mind games, but it's also just knowing what the player's going to do. Mm. I've watched Bebe, well, since his Man United days, mm -hmm. and you know he's going to go for power. Mm, yeah. He's going to go across the keeper. He's not one to kind of just side-foot it. He goes for power. And he's done his homework. He knows where he's going. He waits for him. And it's not even as though he misses it. It's a brilliant save. He does it, not just for Bebe, be, well, you said it. He just, he, he waited. And one thing about penalties as well is, after the first one, most of the time, wherever it didn't work out, mm. teams want to see it go there so they, they are sure other players can go there. Mm. But an intelligent keeper would know they missed it. Maybe the next one they'll go there. Yeah, but that's, no. That's, that's something that was... They go, right. They'll go back to the same direction. Yeah. And he saves it. And it was... Four consecutive penalties mm. <laughs> look going to the same direction. Mm. And eventually, he gets to the last one. And <laughs> that's where the player tries to switch up. And because it's so crucial, he knew he would do something different. Mm. And he got it right. Mm. So we'll move from this one um, straight to the next one, which is, well, Ivory Coast. Mm. Talking about Ivory Coast. We'll talk about the, the red card. Well, Sicho, I know you're a brilliant footballer. I'd love you to come and show me something special here because you would know what to do as a defender in this situation. We'll start, I'll slow it down. Seri, Seri loses the ball here. But as soon as he loses it, it's going, what does Kusunu have to do here? You realize he's closed in on his man. It's, yeah. two, it's 2v1. He doesn't need to commit that that tackle. No, he doesn't. And even with, without the tackle, you can tell his man is almost there to cover him. So what does he do wrong here, if you walk us through? Right, so, so, so as soon as, if we if can uh, drag it back a little bit and play it on. Okay, if we pause it there, I, I don't think he has to commit himself in no. too much into the space. You stand him up. Absolutely, because, and it's, it's actually, his body, his body posture is very wrong yeah. in the way he's running. It doesn't give you a chance to make a very good challenge of the ball. So he's running, if like, square to his man. But if he, if he gives him that one yard here, forces him to come to his left, then he's, he's, he's very much in control. But what he does here is to almost run past his man there. So he leaves the space behind him for him to chop him. And once you're on a yellow card, surely it's in your mind that you are... You can't commit such fouls on that edge of the yeah. box. And that is exactly what he does and puts the team into trouble. He should also have known 
that has got Michel Sarri, who's lost the ball, also running to close down. Yeah, and with, with the three of them, you can handle one man. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of a, a surprise he does that. We'll, we'll look at the Ivory Coast goal. So the first Ivory Coast goal. We're talking about Adingra and him being introduced here. I think he did what he had. This is a natural instinct, running at defenders. But one thing Mali, it seems they forgot, is Fofana is a good striker of the ball from distance. Mm. On the edge of the box, Adingra is trying to create an overload where you're chasing him and they left Fofana. And that just made it very, very easy for Fofana to, he's trying to palm, just place it in the direction of the keeper. Mm. Somehow, hope for a touch. Because I'm thinking, I think I was thinking, maybe they just might touch me somewhere exactly. in the penalty box. Exactly. And they were all moving away. Let's count the number of players. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can add that. Seven. Probably seven is arriving late. Seven V, well, three and a half. Because yeah. the, the last person is on the edge of the box. Mm. And it's quite a big surprise that Mali allowed for Fana that much space, but I didn't got that much time on the ball. Mm. We've seen him at Brighton, yep. and since he's been there, you just need to give him a little space. He's ready to run, mm. he's ready to dribble. Mm. So once they allowed him that space, it just meant he needed a bit of luck, mm -hmm. and Lady Luck did shine on him, because once the shot came back into his path, he just yes. had to get a touch Not on it. And one, one interesting thing as well, as as, um, okay, so as the play develops here, and uh, Edinger is carrying the ball, I'm not, listen, if, if you are there, yep. you are there, you, you surely should have an eye on, on. on what is happening on the, on the edge of the box. Yep. Right, because you've got your man here, you've got your man here, they can do this job, and he's just arriving in the box. I'm, I'm thinking that you should, you should really be, be, be aware of the space. Close to him. Yeah, and, and the space here is just too huge for, 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 for them to, to allow it to, the ball to drop into it. Right there, this space is just too huge. And Fafana has shown that he can strike from range. So as, as soon as the ball pops up to him, he doesn't even have the cleanness of contact. At that point, he's late. At that point, he's very late. The boy has already got to his feet. And he forces Traore brother to come in, to, and he's also late. He's late, yeah, because he's, he's arriving there late. And he should have on the edge of the box. Just realize that Fofana could be a threat. But there's no way he didn't just scores from the place yeah. that he got the ball. There's they boxed no him out. From He's there. only going to yeah. pass. And, and rather they give him a, a, a better opportunity to score. Right. Mm. And then with the second, um, Ivy goes for and, and again, it's, it's Fofana who strikes the ball. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, just, the, just on yep. the edge of the penalty area. When, when you're a man down, it's about playing to your strengths. Mm. You, can't, you might not be able to get the ball as quickly into the opponent's half. But then when you do get it, you put it in front of people that can hurt the opponent. And Fofana is one, because he doesn't need to be in the box to hurt them. Mm. Again, simple free kick. If they deal with this free kick, but rather you head it back straight into where We've seen Fofana do it at the beginning of the mm. tournament. Throughout the tournament, he's been trying to score this goal mm. again and again. You don't give him that chance, especially as he's just hurt you mm. in, this, in this same fixture. Yeah. You don't give him the space yeah, all the I'm, time. I'm just seeing that there were at least two players, you know, just within, um, in front of Fofana, two players who could have tried yeah. to you know, just reduce that space of one had. And even when the shot was played, I'm looking at the way they were trying to block the ball. It looked like they were mm -hmm. dodging the ball and really trying to block it. Yeah, even more importantly as well, when, but one thing you want to avoid when you're defending set pieces, if you're a goalkeeper, you're a defender, like, you, you, there's no way you want to get the ball, head the ball into <laughs> these back. central areas. That you, you just can't predict what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're heading the ball into these areas, you're causing problems. Mm -hmm. So you rather want to get the ball into the wide area Another get the ball corner. there, Another just story. get the ball somewhere here. If the ball comes into the wide area, you've got some time to regroup and reshape and defend proper. Mm. But if the ball is going to come onto the edge of the box, that you can't predict who the ball falls to. And he's under pressure, the defender who has the ball there. He's under pressure, but it's the direction that he gives to the ball, if you see it, that, that is the problem. You, you don't want to head the ball into the central areas because that is there. If he flicks the ball backwards, backwards and the ball goes into the wide area, there's no danger. 
But as soon as you flick the ball into the central area, you're asking for, mm. for trouble, and that is the trouble they got. Mm. Interesting, interesting. And uh, look, I, I strongly think that the players, it's the dying members of the game. Like, throw your body in there. You look at how they were dodging the ball. They literally gave the ball space to go through and for, you know, the players to just flick, flick it what it's like. It was, it was a nice flick too, because at that point, any he, little flick, flick will get the ball in the back of the net. Keeper was committed. Mm. Yeah. He knew it was coming straight to him. And once you're planted on the ground, it's quite difficult to change. And yeah. it took a change in direction, and that was mm. it. Mm. And that was it. And that's how Ivory Coast actually ended up winning uh, the game, 120 minutes. And uh, for a moment, you could see the Malians were hoping the game could travel into penalties. Because I think when Ivory Coast got the equalizer, suddenly some pressure all of a sudden fell on the Malians. Yeah. What was happening at that point? <sighs> Again, Mali have got a problem with the... Uh... I think mentality is not great mm. for Mali. Mm. And having, having led the game for so long and, and having had a man, seeing Kodivu have a man down, having mm. missed the penalty, mm. and now Kodivu are getting the goal in the, almost the final minutes of the game, the whole atmosphere is behind the team. They just couldn't find the extra yard to go. Mm. And at the time, like I said, they were playing the ball too much. They were trying to be too competitive at the time, where I thought they should have taken this thing out of the game, mm. conserve energy, slow the tempo of the game. They couldn't just manage that. Mm. And in the end, what Cote d'Ivoire did was to win it by hook or crook. Mm. And, and that is one thing that was necessary that Cote d'Ivoire would do. What Cote d'Ivoire did in the final minutes of the game was to throw chaos into the game. Mm. But when you watch Mali play, they are about one of the most organized teams on the continent. Mm. But as soon as Cote d'Ivoire gave them chaos, they didn't know how to deal with the chaos. Mm. And it was also, so when you watch Cote d'Ivoire's goals, they were chaotic. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And once you give Mali any, any chaos, mm. they struggle to cope with it. And that is what got them on the Well, it's fascinating, but that wasn't just one of the fine, fine goals that we saw. Of course, the DRC goal, we saw a really nice one. And at this point, we're going to take a look at some of the really, really good goals that did happen in the quarterfinal. The guys are going to be reacting. It's on the screen. So let's enjoy them. Ninety-six. that's a goal! Superbly done! Directly taken from the free kick and surely it's all over now. It wasn't a fluke. He knew what he was doing. He saw the goal. Opportunities onto his right foot. Surely must left fly. He does. And into the back of the net. And Mali has finally taken the lead. And it's Nene Dorjanes, the substitute, who has gone home an absolute beauty. And Mali, how they deserve this goal. And he's not celebrating it. Nene Dorjanes because he was born here. Bit of movement as well. Over all of them headed away. Goes to Fafana. No, no. It's, um, you can see Nigeria versus South Africa, 5 p.m. And, um, of course, Cote d'Ivoire and DR Congo. That, those are the fixtures happening. Tomorrow, God willing, we're going to really spend some good time on these games because, boy, Nigeria versus South Africa. Nigeria versus South Africa. Two really big nations on the continent. Two really big guys, man. For sure. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating game. Mm. And um, Nigeria are looking like the favorites out of the four.
Yeah. Considering the fact that they are, they've still, still not lost the game, I thought they were unlucky in their first game. The coaching was brilliant. Individuals let them down. They couldn't take their chances. But there's something about South Africa we can't un un underestimate. Yeah. They come in with about eight sundown players. And that is crucial because those players are winners. Mm. You, can't, you can't downplay the, the importance of having winners in your, mm. in your side. Mm. They've gone to the African Football League. They've won it. They've won on the continent. Mm -hmm. They win the league in South Africa. So the, the winning mentality is there. Yeah. And when you saw them play in the quarters or even in the last 16, they just, they, they just had the mentality of a team that was determined to win. And let's face it, in the quarterfinal, South Africa were not brilliant. Yeah. They didn't play their game, but they still managed to drag themselves through. And that is what winners do. Mm -hmm. So you can't underestimate that. So they've got... It's going to be a very good game. Nigeria as well have shown that they are not here for the flamboyant football mm -hmm. as they were with for two years ago. Yeah. They are more efficient units now. They don't care about scoring four, five. They care about not conceding. And reminds me of the French team that won the World Cup, really. Mm -hmm. They got more goals than Nigeria are getting, but the setup and the approach was very much the same. Mm -hmm. Not all attacking, but base in the defense, very solid. You're going to be watching this game, right? <laughs> you don't need to tell me, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Cote d'Ivoire really... They, they should learn some lessons from the last fixture. Mm. They need to realize that, well, everybody, the nation's, the nation's looking at you, but then mm. coach needs to set up with the mentality of playing freely. I say this because against the DRC Cong a DR Congo team where there is a lot of attacking talent, yeah. there will be opportunities to... To, to be one-on-one -on -one or create two V1s via their fullbacks. Mm. So you want to be sure that if it's Pepe that's starting, he's, he's up against the left back of DRC. Mm. Um, same on the left-hand side. Maybe there's a game to throw in Adingra mm. because he's got that energy, he's got that um, excitement from the, the previous game where he did see them through into extra time and what's not and the role he played. But then he needs to settle on what he's doing with Frank Kessie, mm. Fofana and Seri. Mm. I say this because we saw what happened when they were all on the pitch. Yeah. There was some sort of intensity. There was some control mm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. If they can figure out what to do in the middle, mm. they could be a, a good match for, for the DRC middle. But then they need to be wary of Wisa, Bonganda. There's a lot of attacking talent that mm. DRC have got. And mm. if there's discipline in the back, I'm quite excited that Kusunu is not available. Mm. He, is an, he is a brilliant player, but then this Afghan has made me see that there are elements to his game that he needs to work on. Mm. As, a, as a strong centre-back or a strong right-back, your timing of tackles and just alert, alertness throughout the game is quite important. And mm. he's not shown it throughout the, the, the tournament. Yeah. But Indika being there, Wilfred, <laughs> Willy Bully being there as well, it, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna a be, bit of a concern, it, but then mm. I hope the experience will see him through because mm. he's not got the legs, but then experience probably will be his best bet to yeah. see him um, marshal the defense against the We're going to spend so much time on this, these two games tomorrow, God willing, when we come back. We're going to be touching the screens. We're going to take a closer look because this is, this, is, this is a really crucial stage. You know, you're just about one game away from... The, uh, from lifting the trophy if you happen to be in the final. So, but for now, uh, South Africans who have gotten one over the Nigerians because you know, the Grammys did happen and Tyler won at the head of Benaboy and Ashake and the Nigerians don't understand it and they are saying they are hoping on Wednesday they will the get revenge. one the over the, the South revenge. Africans. You know, we wait to see. Sisha, thanks so much for coming too. Pleasure. Report, thanks for coming too. Pleasure. But this is how the South Africans did celebrate this and I'm sure they're still celebrating Tyler's Grammy win and that's what we'll leave with you and we'll return here sometime tomorrow. Enjoy Prime. My name is Zach Musbao and see you tomorrow.